Hi, let's keep going on chapter one. Um, what we covered in the first lecture was um, primarily oriented towards learning um, what the purpose of accounting is. And then of course we did the accounting equation, um, which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And then owner's equity has those four components, right? You should be able to say these with me now. Um, owner's capital, owner's drawing, which makes equity go down revenues and expenses, which makes equity go down. So we did that tabular analysis and then I gave you some homework to reinforce that. What I'd like to do is show you where you should have um, reviewed your work. Um, here in chapter one solutions manual, uh, if you open that, you'll see that this is the um, solutions manual. So the four things that I asked you to do, you'll go and um, make sure that you did them correctly. So um, after that, you will have had a chance to have done this tabular analysis uh, for four times. So hopefully um, that you feel very comfortable with that. And we're gonna move on to what do we do with that? And what we do with that is we create financial statements. And financial statements is the way that we pass information on to our um, users of our data. So um, there's three basic financial statements that we're gonna be looking at. A balance sheet, a profit and loss statement, also called an income statement, and a statement of owner's equity. And when you're done with this chapter, you will be able to analyze transactions and record them in that tabular summary and then do the financial statements. So the first one's easy because we've already looked at this, haven't we? We know that revenues and expenses are components of equity and we know that revenues minus expenses equal net income or loss. If revenues are more than expenses, we have income. If expenses are more than revenue, we have loss. Then a statement of owner's equity, it starts with the beginning amount in the owner's capital. And the business that we did last time was a brand new business. So the beginning capital was zero. And what we're gonna be working on today, also the beginning capital, it's a brand new business. So beginning capital is zero. But if it was a company that um, was anything other than its very first month of operations, your beginning capital for whatever month you're working in would be the ending capital from the prior month. So beginning balance plus any new investments of cash or assets from the owner, plus or minus net income or loss, which obviously we get from the P&L. P&L and income statement are the same thing, profit and loss or income statement, minus withdrawals equals ending capital. So this is the statement of owner's equity. And you end up with one number called equity, and that's the number that goes on the balance sheet right here. And you, you should be saying like, oh my gosh, the balance sheet is exactly what the accounting equation is, and it is. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. So this is the order you have to do the financial statements in because you have to get net income to plug into this model, to get equity, to plug into this model, to get your balance sheet. And this is all based on accrual accounting. Remember that revenue recognition? We record our revenue when we earn it, not when we get cash. We record our expenses when we incur them, not when we spend cash. So all three of these financial statements are based on accrual accounting. Write this word down, A-C-C-R-U-A-L, accrual. And then the last major financial statement, which we will not cover in this class, is a statement of cash flows, which looks at um, cash in and cash out. These statements do not, are not cash-based because we use revenue recognition and expense recognition principles. What do they look like? Well, um, oops, I think what we were looking at before 
was um, a company called, it was that web-based company that we just did the tabular analysis on in the last um, lecture. So here's my income statement, also known as a profit and loss. Please note that all financial statements have a three-part heading, name of the company, name of the statement, and then the time period covered. Both the P&L and the statement of owner's equity are for the month ended or for the year ended or for the quarter ended. The balance sheet is a snapshot of a point in time. So that is simply the date. You don't write the words for month ended. So we know that an income statement model, and again, I can go back here and look at this, is revenues minus expenses. So here we go. Revenues minus expenses equals net income. If you remember, there were two kinds of revenue, consulting revenue, and then they rented some of that extra square footage, remember, for 300 bucks. So our total revenues, 6,100. Put the detail here in the first column and then pull the total over to the far right and label it total revenues. New section, expenses. Then you put all of your expenses are in alphabetical order. And if you recall, again, we had two expenses, rent and salaries. Again, detail in the first column, total them up, pull it to the right, and then simply take revenues minus expenses equals net income. Now, second financial statement, statement of owner's equity, beginning capital plus investments, plus or minus net income minus draw. My beginning capital was zero because it's a brand new business. My investments, 30,000. My net income, where do I get that? Well, I just calculated it. I pull it down here. Detail in the first column, pulling out all your additions to the right-hand column. Zero plus 34,400 is 34,400 minus our draws or withdrawals of 200 ending balance equity, 34,200. The C Taylor Capital Account, Chaz Taylor Capital Account is the same as equity. All four of those items that we learned about in the last lecture are all consolidated into one number for our balance sheet down here. If you remember from our tabular analysis, we had three types of assets, cash, supplies, and equipment, total 40,400. One kind of liability, accounts payable, we owed a vendor for some supplies and our capital. And of course, liabilities plus equity also have to equal the same amount. This right here, this screen, if you need to print it and study it or memorize it, whatever you need to do, this is absolutely paramount to moving forward in the class. Um, the balance sheet is used to extrapolate to the statement of cash flows. Again, at this point, you are not going to be required in this class to know how to prepare one. What you do need to know is that the PL, the statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet are all prepared according to accrual accounting. They are not cash based. This is obviously cash based. And the last thing we need to learn in this chapter is our first ratio. Ratios are a way of looking at the financial statements and helping us to understand a little bit more um, what's going on in them. It makes meaning of all the data that we find on financial statements. So the first one we're gonna learn how to do is called ROA, return on assets. And that means how good of a job are my assets doing in um, generating net income? Because that's basically what we're in business to do, right? Is to generate net income. So the model for ROA is net income divided by average total assets. And your average assets are your beginning and ending assets divided by two. So um, they're just showing you like Nike versus Under Armour. 
um, what their ROA has been over time. So obviously you wanna track this as a business. It's a pretty important ratio. Two years ago, 19%, then it took a huge dip. So that would be a very concerning um, trajectory for management to look into. Why is that happening? And jump back up. For Under Armour, the negative number means they've been having a net loss, right? So it's net loss divided by average total incomes up, average total assets. That's why the number is negative, also concerning. Okay, so what I'd like to do um, now to finish this off is you're gonna go into this lab and that's what you're going to do before you listen to the last lecture. And the last lecture isn't really a lecture, it's a work along. So um, it's, I'll go over the lab. So just so that you see what you're doing, when you click on this lab, we have a company, um, an attorney, her name's Joan Roberts, Robinson, and she opens her own law office on July 1st, 2021. So her beginning balance um, capital is zero. And during the first month of operations, the following transactions occurred. So you can read through these. There's nothing in here that we didn't do in the first lecture. You should set up a tabular analysis, just like we did in the first lecture. Record on that tabular analysis how each of these transactions impacted the accounting equation. And then prepare the PL, also called an income statement, the owner's equity statement, and the balance sheet as of July 31st for Joan Robinson. And you're going to do that. Uh, just make get a piece of paper out, just like we did before. Turn it sideways, put your assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity across the top. Put in all of your detail down here. You may or may not use all of these accounts, right? And again, don't forget, I should probably just put this all in one color so you see the four things that make up owner's equity, right? Owner's capital, owner withdrawals, revenues and expenses. And we know revenue minus expenses, net income or loss. And go ahead and do the tabular analysis on your piece of paper, just like we did in lecture one. And then please prepare an income statement, an owner's equity statement, and a balance sheet, all in good form like we just learned. And I will see you in the last lecture, lecture number three, and we will go over this. Um, thanks for uh, sharing this second lecture, and I hope that it was beneficial. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye.